like that, I'd make sure I got the architecture correct. Mm -hmm. um, but like on that one in particular, that architecture <coughs> is from somewhere that exists, but the background may have been different. Yeah. And these yeah. days, if like when you ride ride around, even around here, there might be a shopping mall in the background. There might be telephone wires. So if that's artistic license, and I leave that stuff out to make a more idyllic picture. But if that one had a shopping mall in the background, would you guys have bought it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, maybe not. New, New Jersey shop. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Artistic Photoshop. But it's almost a developer. Yeah, yeah. But because so, but you want that idyllic feel and something you can connect with emotionally and all that. And especially like a, a time of day like that. Like yeah. The barn, it's not quite in silhouette yet, but it's going to be, you know, the sundown. Those are special moments. The time to like, you can look along this wall. Like, these are all nighttime a paintings, there's yeah. a moon, there's stars, it, there's a lot of sunset paintings or sunrise paintings or nighttime with lights. Lit. Those are the moments that I, it, they speak to me most, you know, yeah. they just, because they're fleeting. Yeah. They don't last long. And when you catch them, that's just something special. Like even to this day in my studio, at some, I'll just go out and watch the sunset. Yeah. Or in the morning, like I, I have pastures of cows behind my place and the sunrise is like right over the pasture and I'll just go out and watch it and take pictures and the colors I see and that kind of stuff. I will put it like that, those colors, that's right out the front door of my studio. You know, those colors. And, and I mean, you get the same colors here, too. And sometimes I'll intensify them or whatever for artistic purposes, you know. But that makes that makes the kind of painting you want to look at every day. Sure. It makes you feel like, you'll have to tell me next year, when you come back for another one, <laughs> if that one made you feel good all year, you know. And, yeah. and chances are, that's why you connected to it, you know. So, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm yeah. glad. Thank you. You, you, gave, you yeah. gave us a year. Can't we come back sooner? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. I'm all for it. Sure, you want to live today. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait, now there's another one, too. There's the one with the red roofs. Um, yeah. Uh, who did that? What? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one for each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Love it. Cool. It's Any questions on that one? <laughs> Was it the red roofs that drew you to that one? Yes. The way that the yes. color popped? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it worked. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and and I love that, and that's probably one of the reasons that that one over there sold you yeah, know, earlier it's too. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's just yeah. that pop of red. It really yeah. looks good in the house. How long yeah. That's what we did too. We did the red. Oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 That How long does it take? So, okay. No, no, we have one. Uh, we have our place up here. Because I wanted one. that one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh <sorry. laughs> okay. So how long does it take? Is, is is the next question, and that's you know Terry, I think sometimes says you know fifty six years. <laughs> and, and, and Terry being an artist, you know, that, is, that is how it is, because I, Terry knows, as well as other artists know, like, so many paintings I've destroyed in, in the earlier days and whatever, and like, do those count in the time it takes to get a good one? You know, so that's why we say, you know, 56 years or whatever, but, but to be more honest about how long a painting like that takes, these big ones can take probably up to a month and a half or two months, because the process, that's how long the process takes. But as like professional artists, we always have to be working on more than one at a time because that's not every single day for a month and a half. It's but there's drying time between layers, mm -hmm. at, at least the way that I work because mm -hmm. I use glazes and there's a lot of luminosity in these paintings and you can't just do that in one sitting. Uh, and it's not because an artist is not good enough; it's like literally you just can't get those effects unless you build up layers of color, transparent colors, glazes. You know, stumbling and glazing is what yes. they teach artists. And that, and that takes time. And it's done with oil. And the oil has to dry. And if you try to go over it too soon, you wreck you wreck a painting that you've worked on for a month. If you try to push it too fast. So you have to be careful about stuff like that. So it's not every single day, eight hours a day, but it takes that long to produce. Yeah. So Michael, that black asphalt roof on that piece in the corner that's amazing oh really yeah. that's yeah. your most different yeah. roof so yeah. it's just... wait the one with the moon there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, black. The, the way yeah. The, the asphalt just yeah. glitters yeah. that's really impressive well that's that beautiful. and that guys is done by uh texture because you, you're right it's it when you say that it glistens and all that yeah. that's the that's the, the varnish on it is catching light and the texture of it, it it's, it's like if you go out and look at a wet roof and you know for morning dew on it or something like that it'll glisten yeah. And so I get that effect by texture. And that, that's the secret and something like that. And, and you have to be careful where you put texture in a painting because sometimes it's incorrect. And sometimes it is correct. So all those judgments are what artists are doing you know, when they're creating something. And you learn how to do that by making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> a lot of mistakes. But eventually, you know, you get it. And, and then, oh, okay, I figured it out. 
and then you get somebody at a show like this complimenting you on something like that, you know, that you did wrong a hundred times before you figured out how to do it right. You know, so thanks for that. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I like the lighting in the windows of Stowe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Amazing. So I think I, I, I'm going to tell everybody how, exactly how you do it. So, now, now, so you can do it yourself. And I think I told a few people already, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but on something like that, the, the windows, how they're lit, or even the glow, like in the one that, in the big one that, that these guys were, how the sky is lit like that, or on this yellow one, or, or on a lot of them, any of the lit windows. This is done by a process called glazing. And glazing is like, you have to think, glazing is where you use transparent pigments, transparent oil paint. And it's weird to think you paint something that's transparent, but think of like sunglasses, like the amber color sunglasses are. You put them on and now you see the world and it's all colored amber because you can see through them, even though it colors everything amber. So a transparent layer of paint, you could think of as something like that. You put it on and light still goes through it, but then it, the light bounces back off the opaque paint that you put under it and it refracts back and lights up the transparent pigments and that gives it the effect of glowing. So you can't do that in one step. Like you can't just have your palette and do it and accomplish it. It has to be done with successive layers of glazing. And sometimes the more layers you do, the more impact. It like has diminishing returns after a while, but once is not enough. You, you do it several times until you get that effect of the windows being lit. It's the light going through it. Like if you turn out the lights, it goes dark. But when you put on the lights, and that's why paintings like this somehow change during the day too, in your house. You know, depending on where the sun rises, where it sets. So it's like almost like a living, breathing thing that like move, has movement or it has some sort of life. You know, it's a weird thing to say, but you'll see. <laughs> you'll see, because you, you, it really does happen. And so that's how you get effects like that. And we've had people, I think Terry's seen it before and I've seen it, where people try to look behind the painting because they think there's a light. It's <laughs> lighting it up. But, but that, that is how you achieve those effects. And you, and you, so you can't do it like in a la prima methods. Like sometimes you you'll be through town and somebody will have an easel set up there and they got their palette and they do like you. It's not that they're bad artists, but you, you can't get that effect in one shot. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have to build it up. So it's like you're crafting the painting. You know, it takes work to do, that. and you have to be careful too because you can't look like you can't beat a painting up. If you look like you work too hard on it, it loses the freshness, it loses the impact, or its appeal. So. You kind of have to work really hard to make it look like you didn't work very hard. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so you know all these judgments that artists make. That, that's the process, you know. It's but that that's now you all know how to do it. So you know, you know, you know, you do it. Oh yeah. So how many layers of glazing do you usually do just for the windows? Do you think? Uh, good question. Let's see. Um, on that one, windows because it, it's not a whole big. It's so small. So it, it's small. So maybe maybe five or six would be enough. For, for windows like that, five or six layers. But you know, remember that it's oil paint, so mm -hmm. that takes time to dry. So, you know, that painting, I just framed it yesterday morning. <laughs> I just made the show. Like, I just made it, you know? So, <laughs> and your framing but, is gorgeous as well. Yes. Oh, thank, oh, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I, I really do take some care in that. Like, all the corners are, are they're called finished corner frames. The frame is put together and then the finish is applied. Uh, so it's not like chopped and joined like you know there, there's places for that like poster art and stuff like this whatever you know you're not gonna that that's they look it looks great on that but on the on the fine art you know paintings get to be expensive and i like to put a good frame on it that's going to last and and really look good and if you don't you don't even have to know the difference between what what's a great frame what's an average like if you look at it, i just want you to feel like ah, this is a fantastic frame and everybody always comments on them so I guess I'm doing it. I guess I'm doing it. <laughs> so yeah, and that you know, there I use on all of these like that. It's it is 23 karat gold leaf line around those the, the, the corners of like frames are crap, but a good frame by a good frame artisan is really something special, you know. So I, I try to you know I try to use good frames. Do you do the gold leaf in yourself? No, no. I I would I used to make frames and all, but it's just. It's just too time consuming. And like there are guys who have shops that are set up like warehouses and uh, they have staff to like they it would it just they I would love to do it, but I I'd rather make a painting in the time mm, it would take me to make a frame, you know. Yeah. So you lay on little squares of gold paper and Yep, that's it. Those are them. Three yeah. inches or something. That's it. Mm. Yep, just gold leaf like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Michael, did you tell everybody about the ones that you got with the lady over here? 
Oh, this from, from France? Yeah, mm -hmm. so, you know, most people recognize my work as these farmscapes and, and all that, but I have such a good relationship with Terry, and she lets me be an artist and, and do different <laughs> things, like that big New York City one over there, yeah, if, if you guys saw that, and some of these primitive ones, too. And everything I bring, Terry, they, they never come back to me, so. <laughs> I, I love it. It's okay. I love it. But yeah, like, so that one there, that, that painting right there, is something that I just wanted to do, and Terry said, well, then do it. So I did it. So I, I love Impressionism, too. Now, these, my normal stuff is not really, wouldn't be called Impressionism, but I, I love Impressionist art, and, I, and that big New York City one has some Impressionist um, tendencies in it and all, but that one really does. And so... All art, really, modern art, came from France. Um, when the Impressionists were there, Monet, Renoir, everybody knows those names. And the Americans went there and visited and saw this new kind of art and then came back to America. And one of my favorite American artists is Frank Benson. And he made a painting very similar to that. And I saw a big show. And the painting was about that size. And I saw a show in, at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in Richmond. And they blew up that painting to be... Uh, it was like seven stories tall huh. on the outside yeah. of the building, and that was the feature painting in the show. Yeah. And I just remember looking at it like, oh, yeah. my God. I mean, the painting was, all, was this big. Yeah. So it just really moved me. So I didn't repeat the model. The model he used, her name was Eleanor, and it was his wife. And she was standing, you know, looking out at sea with her hands shading her eyes, whatever. So I didn't want to do his, I don't want to repeat his painting. But sort of as, as an homage to it, I, I used this model in that position, sort of looking out to sea and... I, that frame I had before I did that painting, and it helped inspire this painting. Mm -hmm. And it was just sort of, that, that frame is from the 1880s, and it's from Paris. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't know what painting it housed originally, but it might have been a painting at that time, like an Impressionist painting from that time. And so I, I just wanted to catch French Impressionism, American Impressionism, <laughs> and I produced that painting just because... As an homage to like what I consider great art, you know, in a great artistic period, you know. So that's and Terry was like, "Okay, do it." <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> so I was like, Can you talk maybe a little bit about? I mean, you've got the impressionists and the primitive, and, yeah. and that the, the city was was about yeah. lots of detail. And yeah. This one is action. These are very still, yeah. like Hopper kind yeah. of. Yeah. Can you talk about what what how you? Go, what mood yeah. you're in to do those two yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, and, and mood has a lot to do with it, and keeping it fresh has a lot to do with it. Because I see, there's some great artists who I've seen in, like, you know, everywhere I go on vacation, everywhere I go, we go, and I kind of drag her through every art gallery <laughs> and, and whatever. Fortunately, she likes that kind of stuff, too. But I, I, just, I just have to go. But in contemporary art galleries like this one, um, if you're in enough of them, you'll, you'll see... Um, the same artist, maybe in a different state, maybe see him in Boston, you see him in New York. And generally, artists do one thing. But I, I never wanted to do that. I started out doing that. Um, and I, I got tired of it. It was hard to keep it fresh. And maybe it, I, I felt like it showed. Like I was just churning out paintings. And I, you know. But when you do work all these different styles, like before you finish a, a, a farmscape painting, you're already thinking about a painting like that primitive painting or the big New York City painting. It's just a way for me to keep it fresh. And and a lot of galleries won't really let you do that. So I'm really lucky that I have Terry because she lets me do all that stuff. Terry. Yeah, no, really, because uh, sometimes people come in and... I'm lucky I have Terry. Yeah. Are you lucky? <laughs> <laughs> right. Write that right. down. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. But so for me, it, it keeps it fresh. And, and I think there's something to be said for that, right? Like the, yeah. the paintings are never stale. They never, it, at least to me, I'm hopefully nobody feels that, you know, but it, it really keeps it fresh because I'm, it's exciting every, every morning I get up to maybe start a new style. You know, if I had to do the same, like for whatever, right, if you had to do the same thing every single day, I mean, you really have to love it, you know, and I, if I had to do farmscape painting, if I get a commission, so I'm excited about it, but it's just nice to be able to mix it up. So that's why I do stuff like Expanding. that. Expanding. Sure. And then, you know what? It's fun. When you've been at it a while, it's also fun to test yourself against, like, a historical, you know, artists from a different era. Like, oh, you know, so I'll, and I'll learn something in doing a painting like that that I'll then apply to a painting like that. And unless you did it, you'd have never learned it. So there's the learning aspect, too, which, again, is why we are always doing museums and, and visiting. Because, like, the learning never stops, no. right? Yeah. That's it's the fun of it. That is the fun of it. Yeah. And, that, mm -hmm. and, and, like, maybe if you're not in it, 
So it sounds like artistic mumbo jumbo, but it's not. It's not. It's like you, if you're feeling it, you know, it, it makes a difference to do all this stuff. It really does. Yeah. Do you work on multiple pieces at the same time? Yeah, you, ha you have to because sure. of like you, you glaze a layer with oh, oil, right. and now you're just sitting there. You, know. you, you have to you have to be doing something else, yeah. especially with the frequency with which Terry sells stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be doing you have to be doing other stuff, and and, and that's exciting too. Sure. But I will say, you know, if I'm if I'm working in one style, it's hard. Like I can't be working on a farms campaign at the same time I'm working on that. Because it, it's weird. Uh, I don't speak two languages, I wish. But it is like speaking two different languages. Yeah. Maybe people who can do that can go right back and forth. We have friends who do that, you know. But for me, it's like you have to think differently. And like in a painting like that, the brushes are different. Mm -hmm. the, the mediums are different. The, I use different oil paints. I mix them differently. So, that, you know, that's... that. that so it's speaking a different language. It's, it's, it's hard to do that. So I'll work on it two or three of these at the same time, two of those at the same time, and you do it in groups like that. Yeah. And yeah. do you mix your paints differently? Like, do you mix your paints like the Impressionists on yes. the canvas? Yes. When you're doing like that? Yeah, and I'll use historical paints that are still, like, handmade, like, like they would have used oh, right. at that time. Yeah, So because it, it, it matters. Yeah. It ma like, if I use modern contemporary paints on that painting, it may not have looked like a, a painting from that time, mm. which I was going for. Like you, if you go over that and you really look at the texture and everything, like you won't see it in like the painting behind you. I think right. it's not; it doesn't call. It's uncalled for there. But but you have to do it there if you want those effects. So it, it makes a difference. The materials materials make a difference. Yeah. It was really interesting walking around the gallery for the first time and seeing all the different styles with the same cool. name. It was yeah, very cool. Like that guy's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You yes. Talking about farmscapes, have you yeah. ever considered, in terms of mixing it up, uh, where the structure is smaller and you have like maybe farm animals or there's more, like, you do have some in here there, something yeah. different like that? Yes, yeah, and I, and we, uh, there, there was some stuff like that, I, I'm trying to remember the, the last piece, T Terry, <laughs> she sold it too quick for anybody to see it, um, oh man, I, I forget, it was a farce, it was a big one this side this size and it had the far scenery and you could see forever and there was cows and in, in the distant fields and all so yes I, I, I have done that and, and I like doing that I mean and if you want to just give me an idea and I'll do it I haven't done like a I mean a lot of times too you, you have to be mindful of, of what people are looking for when they come to this gallery too for, for what you put in it I mean, like I said, Terry lets me do a lot of stuff, but sometimes, like, you won't see, like, Hudson River School paintings in here. Mm -hmm. And that's just, it's not because Hudson River School paintings aren't great, but, you know, it's a business, and you, you have to make sales, and it's not really what people are, are looking for. Um, <laughs> fortunately, I do a lot of commissions, and sometimes people are looking for stuff, and they don't know who's going to do it, and Terry's like, well, I know a guy who can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I'll do it, yeah. you know, but, so I, I don't have... You know, I don't have a whole lot, a lot of stuff. There's not a lot of call for a, a painting like that. You know, so we do have to stick to what people expect. Yeah. You know, to some extent. And then you have a show and you're able to mix it up a little bit. You know, <clears throat> like wall space in the gallery is valuable. Yeah. Like you, you have to put stuff that you think people are going are, are, mm -hmm. are to want. Yeah. And then if somebody wants something different, you know, you know where to send them if they're looking for something that is, is not available here. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, if you have a good idea, come talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's so cute. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah that, the, the primitives, I've, I've done different styles of primitives for Terry too, and um, and she has, has been successful with selling them, and she's been after me to, sell some, to, to make some uh, primitives. So I did a little something different. Again, I just wanted to do something different this time. So and those like cows. Like, yeah, right. She carried like, <laughs> this, too. but I, I gave her something different. <laughs> <laughs> this time I gave her something different. And may, you know, maybe I'll go back to them. Oh, but I sort of surprised her with these. She never saw anything like yeah. that. So I figured, okay, well, let me try that. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's, fun. Mm -hmm. it's just fun to do different. It keeps it fresh. Yeah. yeah, it really does. It, it makes a difference. It's fun. You know, when you're painting, you have a good attitude about it and everything. But they say it comes through, so... Yeah, hopefully it does. It does. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. Well, keep it up. 